Hi and welcome to this DCP Word tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to animate still images using Adobe Premiere Pro. Okay, on my desktop I've got this folder and inside this folder I've got a picture of this fish on a transparent background and I've also got this water video clip. I downloaded both these pieces of content from Pixabay. I'll put a link in the YouTube description so you can download the same content. Let's go to Premiere Pro and we drag and drop that content into the media pool here. And we can see the video clip here. So let's just zoom out a little bit. And I want to take the water and drag and drop that onto the timeline. So we've got the water clip here. It's quite short. So I'm just going to press select it, press Control C to copy. And then I'm just going to press Control V multiple times to add additional clips here so that we've got some more duration on our timeline. Let's take this fish and drag and drop that onto the canvas here one video layer above so we've got the picture of the fish and we want to animate this fish going across the screen and maybe we'll do a few other little things to it as well okay so make sure you could go to windows here and make sure you can see the effects control so click that and you'll see the effects controls for this particular fish picture what we want to do is just drag the fish out here so it's at the end of the timeline and we can adjust this afterwards just want to make sure it's a good duration let's click on that picture and inside the effects control panel we've got a few different options in here these are some of the basic options right to manipulate the image so we can change its position but uh, the left and right or the x uh, the x and the y position here so we can animate these we can add keyframes to position the fish in a spe specific part of this um canvas here i've actually set it to let's set it to 50 percent in fact we can set it to 25 percent here because we need to see the side because we're going to drag our fish off of the side here so that's why it's zoomed out a little bit at 25 percent we can rotate the, the the image as well by rotating and we can change the anchor point for now i'm going to leave the anchor point where it is we don't really need to do anything with that and we've got things like opacity but we'll look at that maybe later for now we just want to change the position so i want to grab this this uh, handle here and drag it to the right so the fish is off of the canvas off of the screen because so we want the fish to move across the screen now to animate this we need to add keyframes and what premiere will do is look at the first keyframe and look at the next keyframe and do the animation sequence in between so i want the fish to move across i want it to pull slightly in the middle and then to move across the screen here so let's do that basic animation so we're going to start off on our first keyframe let's click on this little icon here this is the stopwatch icon that adds a keyframe so when we click on that we get the first keyframe added to our uh, animation sequence now we need to decide what's going to be the total duration i think around 10 seconds so if we move the fish uh, let's say that takes three seconds we'll pause for two seconds and then um, let's say four and four and two so let's move across the timeline to four seconds as i drag across here really what i'm keeping my eye on is four seconds here i want to see four zero zero i can use the arrow keys left and right on my keyboard to increment by frames so it's on four seconds let's go ahead and click this little um this little dot here this adds a natural keyframe so when we click that we can now move the fish across the screen so let's grab this handle and drag across so that the fish is pretty much towards the center right it doesn't have to be exactly uh, roughly around here now i want the fish to pause at this position for a few seconds so we've used four of our 10 seconds so let's pause it at two seconds so four plus two will equal six so let's drag across the timeline to six seconds here this is six seconds and we'll add another keyframe because we because we haven't moved the content or the image at all it will pause for two seconds now we want to move across to 10 seconds let's go to 10 seconds and again it can be a little bit fiddly so when i'm at 10 spot 0, 04 frames i'll use the left arrow key just to move to exactly 10 seconds here on my keyboard i'm using the arrow keys right to move and increment the frames and we'll click on the anchor sorry the um keyframe icon here and we just want to move the fish off off the canvas now right so we're going to move it off the canvas so we've got a very basic animation going here if we move back on the timeline let's go right back to the beginning and click play we'll see our fish will come along and it's going to pause at the middle right because we stopped it for two seconds and then it's going to continue off of the canvas so that's some basic understanding of how animations are done in adobe premiere pro the same logic applies to after effects as well and many other types of applications like blender for example free animation all of these tools use keyframes and then the software will interpret where those where that object needs to be between those keyframes right so what I want to do, first of all, is um, let's actually zoom in a little bit here. So we can grab this handle and drag it to the left so we can see it a bit easier. And we can drag this to the right. So we can see the first two keyframes. I'm going to select 
these two keyframes here these two i'm going to right click on them i'm going to go to uh, the inter interpolation and i'm going to set it to auto bezier here and then i'm going to select these two keyframes i'm going to right click go to the same and set it to auto bezier that will just smooth our animation it will speed up and slow down basically as it's playing out so this looks a little bit on the boring side right but think about it you've learned how to move the content across the screen now if you wanted to you could go to this particular keyframe to move directly to a keyframe you can use these little arrows so this will move directly to the previous and next keyframe this is an easy way to get to the keyframes so on this particular keyframe if you wanted to you could move the fish down a little bit right now the fish will move across but in a downwards direction so if we go back and click play now it's kind of moving in this downwards direction like this and it gets towards the bottom and it will pause see look and it goes and it moves back to that point there and it will move forward again so the software is interpreting where this fish should be positioned based on what you add to the particular keyframe i don't really want the fish to move down so i'm just going to press Control z on my keyboard to undo that action i just want it to move across the screen but you can click on any of these keyframes and move its position you could change its rotation as well so if we were to click on this keyframe and rotate the fish upwards slightly and then go back to the beginning and click play now the fish is rotated in that upwards direction right if we wanted to have the fish move forward and rotate at the same time we could go back um here and on the rotation let's set it back to zero for now because that's a permanent rotation so if we were to add a keyframe let's add a keyframe here we'll click rotation to add a keyframe on that keyframe i don't want it to rotate so i'll click this arrow to move to the next position where the next keyframe would be and then i can just rotate the fish slightly right and if i go back and click play it's going to rotate slightly as well like this can you see that so that's how you can just add these keyframes just remember you're just adding keyframes start and end keyframes and where you want to rotate that particular uh, object let's delete these i'm going to select these keyframes and delete them okay let's improve this animation by adding a wave warp effect so let's click on the fish here and go over to the effects section here if you can't see that go to windows and make sure you can see effects here enabled effects let's click in here i'm going to type in wave warp w-a-v-e-w-a-r-p wave warp two words here you can see wave warp let's drag and drop that onto the fish and then we can see the options here for the wave warp for the wave height i'm going to set it to five i'm going to leave the wave type to sign but we can experiment with these afterwards and the wave width i'm going to leave that uh, setting at 90 and the direction i'm going to leave at 90 and then the speed i'm going to leave at one for now so when we go ahead and click play we can see the fish sort of waving like this right here you can see it like that it's kind of like that underwater sort of wavy effect right rather than the fish just being like stuck static on top kind of gives that sort of effect you can animate this as well you can change the wave right towards the middle you can make it more wave more or wave less for example so maybe we should reduce the wave towards the middle and then continue waving as it moves off right let's try and do that let's go to the first keyframe so we could these little arrows here allow us to just move to that keyframe quite quickly right left and right like this so what we'll do is uh we really want to change the wave speed right i think that would be wise or the wave height one of those two let's in fact move across the timeline uh let's see let's move across to around here and if we were to change the height let's set that to zero we can see there's not much wave there so we'll probably affect the wave height for now so let's leave it at five let's go to the very first keyframe this very first keyframe here and for the wave height we want to add a keyframe so let's add a keyframe and we'll leave it at five and we can click this arrow to move to the next available keyframe that we used before and we'll click on the little dot here to add a keyframe and we're going to set the wave height to zero zero value and then we'll move to the next keyframe across this one and we'll add a keyframe and leave that at zero and then we'll move across to the next keyframe and we'll add another keyframe here and we'll set it back to five so then we're basically switching between five and zero depending on where the fish is positioned right so let's go back to the very beginning let's just go back uh, to the beginning here click play we'll see it sort of wave and then we'll start to slow down the wave it will move across to here and then it will move off and start to wave again right nice and easy nice and simple so now you've got a good understanding 
of how to add these keyframes, how to manipulate them, uh, how to just create these different sort of transitions between uh, this, this fish movement, right? So you can go and experiment now, have some fun, take some images. Like I said, I'll put links to these images in the YouTube description. So you can um, download the same video clip and download that same fish picture and you can go and experiment with them and see what sort of animations you can create. The idea here was to just give you a basic fundamental understanding of how to create some basic animations, but then you can go and do much more advanced stuff. If you want to do some title editing, add some text and stuff, now at least you have the basic skills of knowing how to animate that text or any picture. I chose this specific picture because it has a transparent background. If you don't have a transparent background on your image, then you'll need to use something like Photoshop to cut around the image, save it as a PNG file with a transparent background, and then you can drag and drop that into Adobe Premiere. Maybe watch it one more time. Let's set it to uh, fit. Fit will make sure it fits the window here. We can click the play button. We've got this fish coming in, it's waving, kind of pauses towards the middle, and then it moves off and starts waving again. Okay, so let's minimize this. Let's close this. That's the end of this tutorial. Hopefully you found some useful information in this tutorial and I look forward to seeing you in the next DCP web tutorial.